this man refuses to grow up and he is somebody the minute he walks into the room every woman will skip a heartbeat do every women agree to that see even men agree to that with not much ado ladies and gentlemen my friends please put your hands together to call an actor producer a businessman an entrepreneur and a philanthropist and a son a very dedicated son of a great legend please welcome the man himself who carries the fountain of youth with him wherever he goes akineni nagarjuna for that not something special for you <laughs> now you know i have always wanted to speak to you about so many things we as friends date back i think almost from 86 yes. long years so that doesn't show our age so don't worry about that but Tell me, I want to speak about your dad. I have never had the opportunity or the, you know, privilege to meet him. I have never had the opportunity to work with him. But I want to know from you what it takes to be the son of A N R. Mundga, under ki nos karo. Very good morning. <clears throat> it is a very difficult task uh, what you asked uh, what it takes to be a nar son and uh, it is uh, how do i put it <laughs> it starts from a very very young age seeing this man who is uh, larger than life and growing up in the same house and uh, uh, seeing his qualities seeing his achievements uh, I don't know where to start you have to help me so if you help me I will okay. start from there let me start see we all normally grow up in a family and we know that amma naru nana garu naru andaru naru nana ga baiti ki pani cheyadaniki velthunaru malli inti kelustaru kaani for you when it dawn upon you that you are not born into a normal family your father is not a normal person he is somebody people actually worship not only as an actor but as as somebody who's given so much to the society so when did it dawn upon you in your young age that i am his son oh wow it yeah when i was very young when we were all very young all my siblings and myself um it really never dawned upon us because he was so ordinary normal father at home and uh, he would come treat us with compassion and i don't ever remember him shouting at me all these or uh, raising his hand against me i think my mother took all that credit <laughs> so but uh, um, there was always love there was always smiles when he was around he made sure of that and somewhere he uh, um, imbibed in us uh, even at a young age uh, my job is to make him feel proud somewhere that he taught us that so that's all we were thinking of most of the time ila cheste nanu gar chaala happy ga feel avtaru but he didn't expect that from us and uh, that's uh, i think is a very unique quality of any human being we were never in fear of him we were always in awe of him respect love so that he taught us in a very simple way and i think uh, what i have heard about it is that you know his his compassion towards the family you know uh, that how the family has to stay together actually is taken forward by you your siblings everyone even your children and i believe that whenever you are you are in hyderabad you used to be in hyderabad you would make sure that you have lunch with your parents So, yes sir. yes yeah. so 
you know, why was that? Because in today's times, we don't see that. We are so busy. You know, even if mummy calls, I'm like, Amma, I'll call you later, I'm busy. But that quality, you know, spending time with your family. Because it was wonderful. It was stress-free. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very he, happy person. He was a very happy person. I mean, before I talk about his work and all of that, I definitely want to talk about what we are talking. Even... <clears throat> His presence, his aura was so strong. Uh, I remember even at the age of uh, 55 or, you know, till he, was, uh, till he went away, um, if I was feeling happy, I would head towards his house. If I was feeling sad, I would go towards his house. Not because I was expecting anything, but just going towards his house, sitting there with him for five minutes, would say everything is all right, no problem at all. So that was a kind of uh, aura he generated within the family, and uh, that was really, really wonderful for all of us. And uh, even now, anything, maybe our whole family doesn't get together for all occasions, all the occasions that happen. But if it is father's occasion, everybody will show up. All twenty of us, we will be there. Because this is all this what he spread to all of us. That's, that's great, you know. Uh, Inviting the qualities of respecting and loving your family. Now, your dad didn't have a very simple life. He had seen a lot of struggles, being born into a poor farmer's family. And then I think he used to help his mother in family chores, you know, helping her cooking and doing all the chores at home. But he always has a, had a passion for acting. He would imitate in front of the mirror and his mom used to be, your grandmom used to be his audience. Yes. yes. So has he ever shared those thoughts with you? Yes, of course he shared those thoughts uh, with us. Uh, uh, when he started, uh, he came from a very humble family, very humble beginning, uh, uh, um, a farmer's family. Uh, and he, it was near Gudibada. Uh, AP, Andhra Pradesh then, not Andhra Pradesh, I was a Madras residency then, yeah, then um, from a village which didn't have electricity, and he had come from there. <clears throat> um, he had to, my, fa my grandmother always wanted to have a woman child, and uh, uh, there were no women children then and uh, so she used to dress him up in uh, I guess this is all these are these things which led to, led him to be an actor that's why I'm telling you all of this dress him up and pleats and things like that and he used to look very very cute and pretty that's what happened and uh, and in those uh, those days women were not allowed to act on stage they could not be actors or be on stage so he started playing a woman's role, a uh, girl's role. He first became a heroine on stage at the, uh, a very, very young age of uh, 15 or whatever. I don't remember that. I used to, we still have the photograph of him um, in that dressed up like a girl. He looked exactly like my older sister, Satya. <clears throat> um, as fate... Uh, uh, took its turn, threw its dice. Uh, he was walking. He was at a railway station, and um, uh, one famous producer, Vikant Sanabal Ramayar, he saw him from his seat, him walking, and he said, uh, "Nice eyes, nice nose, nice this thing, whatever." He thought of them. Called the boy and said, "Would you like to act?" And the rest is his. That was way back in 1944, his yeah. very first film, yeah. as a lead. As a lead. Yeah. And uh, he, he moved to, he went to Chennai, of course, this little boy, along with his older brother, who took him, and who was like his father to him, because my grandfather <coughs> expired by then. And um, my father, I distinctly remember telling him that he was swaying his hips. <laughs> he was... He was thought acting was that because he played a girl all this in drama and stage and people started making fun of him and that really dejected him and um, 
we went to Gandhi Beach, uh, the Marina Beach uh, in uh, Chennai and he said he wanted to kill himself because there was so much uh, uh, laughter and all of that. And actually he told me, I remember him telling me he almost went down waist deep into water going in. And then something said, no, I have to prove, prove everybody wrong. And he came back and uh, he corrected himself. And uh, he played that um, <clears throat> Sri Rama in that film. I also said his voice was very weak and feeble. So he used to go early in the morning to the beach. And uh, somebody told him that if you smoke a cigar, it gets more rough. <laughs> and he used to smoke a cigar. <laughs> you never used to smoke till then, so a cigar. And then he would scream at the ocean for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, to make his voice more coarse. And uh, because there was no dubbing or anything then, it is your own voice which is being used, or whatever it is. And, but fortunately for him, his first film was a silent film. <laughs> So his voice was never used. And, uh, and I distinctly remember him telling his first film screening also. Mm, it was in a single theatre somewhere in Andhra, I think in Vijayawada, where they all went. And it was a silent film. And the orchestra was sitting in front of the screen and they were playing the background score. And there was one female and a male voc vocal and they were giving lip to the dialogues. So that's where he started his journey and that film became a huge success. And it released it only in two theatres. Then it would move to different, different towns. Wow. You know, when you look at these incredibly remarkable journey of your father, we always believe, in, in fact the entire film industry believes that how he has been the actual foundation of Telugu cinema interesting that it is today. It was in Chennai. Yes. He was yes. the foundation who brought it to Hyderabad saying that no, because it's Telugu, it has to be in Andhra Pradesh and we need to start something which is for the people of Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Uh, so what what made him to move to Andhra Pradesh? Yeah. <clears throat> in, yeah, I was in Chennai and uh, I remember our house in Chennai also in Adia. I was just three, three and a half years old then. Um, the state split. And Chennai had become, the AP state was carved out. And uh, that was in 57, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, at that point, he was, uh, he said the Telugu films, my bread and butter is being earned from the Telugu. Uh, people, Telugu industry, and uh, my culture, I'm making Telugu films, my culture comes from Telugu. He's very strongly rooted to his culture, very, very. Even till he was almost uh, 75, only used to wear a dhoti, other than for films. Um, strongly rooted to the culture. And uh, he said, I like my children to speak Telugu. Na pillal goda Telugu matla and uh, that was his uh, very strong uh, uh, rooted uh, this thing and uh, he said I'm earning from the Telugu people I want to pay my taxes to the Telugu people this is all his words which I remember him telling me uh, leaving that aside he said Telugu uh, uh, people have such a rich culture we have to promote it so he moved to Hyderabad in 1963 and uh, from then he wanted to start a, a, a facility to make film studio. There was no studios except there was one small studio called Sarli Studio but it wasn't enough. Um, but along with the building a studio is okay, you can build it. But the infrastructure, the musicians, the, 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 all the technicians, all that have to move, that is not an easy job at all. And um, he built this, so he was always uh, in the, he was fearless that way. He said, let us build and they will come. That's, 
That's what he always believed. I think that was his passion for cinema because the minute you talk about Annapurna Studios, in today's times where you see studios being shut down and malls and something else coming up, I would like to tell the audience, and I'm sure all of you know that Annapurna Studios is one of the biggest and the most thriving studios of our country. And it is not in the studios, when you talk about the studios, the words of your father say, cinema is my passion and building cinema is pro uh, prosperity is why Annapurna Studios have been built. Yeah. So his passion for cinema has been great. And I must say, you take the legacy forward. You know, for someone like you who's been a big star from a very first film yourself, you probably wouldn't have taken up on you to continue doing the studio. But today, Annapurna Studios is also coming up with the biggest AI studios, with the newest technology of the world, giving it to the Indian audience. You have a film institute which gives a lot of hope and you allow the young minds to flourish. What brings Nagarjuna to take the legacy forward? Yeah, if you ask me that, it still goes back to my father. It was his vision. It was his vision that uh, moves us forward. And uh, we see greatness in his vision. That's what uh, drives us to move it forward. I won't take all the credit. It's just not me. It's the rest of my family who are all into this, who all like to move this forward. And um, <clears throat> so uh, we started building this, uh, taking it forward. And his vision was to have the best studio. Um, the best infrastructure, the latest of technology. And we are very, very proud to say that uh, uh, we are preferred by right now by Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime. And we have one of the largest virtual production screen, which is about 60 feet by 20 feet height. And we have dedicated uh, a whole section for that. And um, when uh, our, uh, our, uh, most of the top films, all the post-production gets done. We have the largest DI suites in the country there. And um, we have, I'm showing off a little bit. I need to sell my studio here. <laughs> so, and um, when uh, Rajmoli Garu wanted to uh, do Triple R in Dolby Vision, there was no facility anywhere in India. And that was one of the he had to go to Germany to complete it, to do the thing. So at that point, uh, the family, we all decided, we are going to have the Dolby Vision, Vision, Dolby Cinema, Dolby Cinema, in our studio. So it's here now. It's here now. Hopefully, we will be able to launch it with Pushpa. Pushpa too. Yeah. So, um, Dolby Vision, Dolby, uh, Dolby Cinema and Dolby Sound is one. And the Dolby Atmos Theatre is one of the 12 in the world. And we have it in India with us. It's, uh, and uh, Dolby Cinema is the first one in India. And we are exclusive to the Dolby people came and visited us. And they loved our facilities and they made us exclusive in India. No, if anybody in India wants to do Dolby Cinema, they have to come to us. That's great. Yeah. But tell me something. Now, coming to you, we've been speaking about your legendary father. But I also want to come to you because uh, technology, when you talk about technology, when you talk about the latest infrastructure or the new age cinema, what we talk about, does it also come because you are something to do with mechanism, mechanical engineer? Does it come with that too? No, no, no. That it really doesn't come. But it definitely all the, any 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 kind of education, whatever kind of education it is, um, I think it sharpens your mind. It makes you uh, go into a kind of a discipline, and you approach every problem in a certain way instead of a very what do you say? Not not in the right way. You know, you, you approach in the correct path. So, father also had, for that reason, uh, since he brought up education and mechanical engineering, father also had the vision of saying that there's a college, there's something for uh, uh, all kinds of crafts, but not for cinema, not for filmmaking. We were never trained. It is, our training is as good as our boss 
if if uh, if the director for an AD if the director is very is good and he's open about teaching his students the AD start growing you know they open up their mind if the if the director is not like that they always stay there they never give him a chance so he wanted to teach the basic skills of filmmaking it's not that finally it's all up to the student with his creative mind that makes him whatever he is and his zeal to work and his uh, what he puts into it but let us teach the basic skills and that's when he started the anupurna college of film and media which was started about 14 to 15 years ago he started this and there's a long journey for that college it went and now it's in a place where we are very proud of it and uh, um, not just my immediate family my family which came from outside amala <laughs> she takes care of it uh, uh, she takes care of it beautifully and um, we are training there and uh, uh, it's that that is also state of the art it is affiliated to jnfau so we actually give students a degree there that's lovely but i would like to tell the audience that you know when he's talking about mechanical engineering and how it's learning i have learned a thing or two from him uh, i don't know if you remember we were shooting in vishakhapatnam yes and we all used to be you know there were no hotels so we all used to be in um, guest houses and i would eventually every other day wake him up at 2 in the morning because my ac would conk off and then i would wake him up and said now my ac isn't working so he would go down and those days you used to have that fuse you know <laughs> so you coil it and poor guy he was sitting in the morning coiling that and fixed it and then he got so fed up that he taught me how to do it so he said don't wake me up you do it yourself <laughs> so i have learned a thing or two from you but you know coming to family values i see how close knit family you are there you your children or amla or everyone around you pass on that to your children too yes that, you know whatever happens the family has to stay together you have to stay together at the right time not necessarily being there for each other every day basis physically but you need to be connected with each other yeah so how important is that and how, you know the most important thing is how is that you pass on those values to your children of today's generation because there are a lot of youngsters who probably miss out on that part and this is one thing which i want you to tell them when you talk about a kinani family they know that okay that's where they are they are united yes it was uh, i i don't know where uh, i uh, i believe i'm not going to say my father never told me this but i believe i completely believe that finally after everything is done what you're left is with your family you know you can achieve this you can achieve that you can get achieve greatness and all that and finally somewhere uh, you know when you come back home you are with your family and that is what is it's a very strong driving force for me to embody these values i think somewhere we picked it up from father only it was finally with him i mean he would soon as there many times when i came back from work uh two in the morning or something and my father was in working and everybody was asleep and he, knew, he would be waiting there my father who was a superstar himself who was a legend himself he would be waiting there to make sure food was there for me so all these things i think they just imbibe in you the vibes in you yeah now now uh, you know before i take the q a from the audience I want to know from you was there a pressure on you that you have when you became an actor that you have to live up to the legacy of Nata Sakrat Oh god what pressure there was a lot of pressure ratri chaotlu batti putnelli camera and face challenge to face the camera i would be i would wake up in cold sweat so Any comparisons bother you? No, it's not the comparison. It's the pressure you put on yourself. And um, you know, he's already he was. Dada Sahib Falke, nobody. 
Padma Bhushan Award. There's so many, so many, so many things happen everywhere. And then when you walk, he walks on the street. When he used to go along with him, the crowds that used to follow us, all of, all of that. And, and then you're going facing the camera. And that cameraman I knew, who, who probably shot my father through his lenses 20 times, and the director probably directed him. And here I am making a fool of myself in front of him. Fool of yourself? Yeah. yeah. The man who's talking. So it took a long time to grow out of that. Yeah. It took a long time to grow out of that. I would, I had to find my own path. Finally, and uh, I would like to dedicate that, since you're asking about me, to when I walked away from film, what film making was at that time was done. I said, I cannot be like my father or all the other actors on the stage. I want to be presented new. And I found Mani Ratnam. <laughs> <laughs> and I found Mani Ratnam. I went, I remember standing in front of his house, if you speak to him <laughs> at 6 or 7 in the morning for about a month every other week, every other day, because I saw his film Monarada and I loved it. And so I used to stand in front of his house and I said, Mani, why don't you make a Telugu film? And he said, no, I don't know how to do, speak Telugu, how can I make a Telugu film and all of that. Then I used my business sense a little bit. <laughs> to convince him. I said, you expand your horizon. Telugu and Tamil cultures are both the same. They both love. You see Telugu films run here and Tamil films run here. I think that is an MBA, right? Yeah, <laughs> businessman. So it worked for him. And I think that film changed my path. Gitanjali. Uh, changed my path. And as I was shooting Gitanjali, I knew what I was doing is right. Then I caught hold of Ram Gopal Varma. And that really put me up. I'm not saying they are better actors or I, I'm a better actor or anything. It just, I found my path from those two films. Okay. Okay, so that was the journey of uh, Nagarjuna and through his eyes we have seen what Nata Samrat was all about. And the legacy will continue uh, till the cinema industries survives, the legacy of ANR is going to live forever. People like ANR, they never go away, they just live forever. And we are so glad that we have another legend with us, like his son, and who's passing on the legacy to his children, and they're going to take it forward. So now I'm going to uh, throw the question QA to the audience, but before that, my personal question, where's the bottle of eternal youth? <laughs> where's the potion, magic potion? It's all in your eyes. <laughs> Not me. Okay, you're talking about me. Let me ask the audience, how many of you want to know what is the secret of his eternal youth? Sir, it's not the women, even the men want to know. <laughs> I really don't have an answer. Please don't ask me this question. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to throw the questions open to the audience. Mics are ready. Who has the mic here? Okay. And um, I would really appreciate if you could not give your opinions, but just very specific question to Nag, sir. Not about my youth, please. Oh, yeah, please not about, about youth. I think we're done with that. <laughs> and I, 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 I hold exclusive rights about that with Nag. So, uh, anything else. So, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, very good morning, sir. Good morning. Chaitanya played uh, ANR in Mahanati. Yeah. So much played uh, ANR in uh, uh, NTR biopic. So when we can expect ANR biopic film and who, who would you like to play as an ANR in that one? Thank you. ANR biopic, uh, to talk about ANR's biopic, I feel we always talked about it, even father and we all talked about it. I think it's better we make a documentary on his life, more than a biopic. His, to make a picture, a movie out of it, it is going to be very difficult. Because my father's life was like this, and it kept, there is, he carved a path like that, and it will be very boring to make a film. So, I'm being very honest. So, for a film, you need the ups and downs, of an ups and downs, you need to tell a story. And we'll have to fictionalize it a lot. His, his path was just, he was, he was a very gifted man that way. 
so we'll make a documentary of his film, with, but with the NR playing himself. Right. Uh, can we pass the mic to the lady here? In the front? Front, the first row. Um, hello, sir. My name is Avanti. I'm from SMDT Media. I'm a media student. Uh, my question is that, what was your father's long-term vision looking uh, to the telco industry and how is it playing out today in today's industry? <clears throat> his long-term vision, actually my father, I remember him saying that his vision was that he wanted all of India to come and work there, what he was doing. And I, we, I, in my mind I always, he's thinking why will, you know, rest of India come and work in Hyderabad or in his place and um, I think he was a visionary that way and he always said language had no barrier, it will move, it will go and uh, that's what, that was his vision. I don't know if I answered your question right, I couldn't hear my, most of it. Okay, no, she said, yeah, I think you have uh, actually answered her question. Uh, okay, to the man with the yellow shirt behind. Hi, Natsu, can you speak up? Hi, could we speak up? Can you hear me? Feedback mentioned here. Can we just increase the feedback? Hi, hi. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Natsu, this is Prakyat from Gulti, uh, your website. From Gulti? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, so... <laughs> When we go search Devadasu on YouTube, we find a 360 or 720p version. We are celebrating restored classics here in Goa, all the 4K versions and all. But when we go on YouTube and search Devadasu, we find a 360p or a 720p video. So how about taking all the classics of your father and restoring it and making it available free on YouTube? It's easier said than done. Um, restoring the classics is going to be very, very difficult, all of them. We have restored seven so far, but most of the negatives and the positives have been destroyed. They're not there and they were never kept. Uh, nobody had the vision at that time to, to do it. My father has about 30 of his negatives which we have restored. So, yes, uh, once all these are restored, they will be on the Annapurna website, uh, which we'll definitely put them. But unfortunately, a lot of producers at one time have sold all rights to channels. That includes digital rights, all the future exhibition rights. Uh, they did not know. They were fooled by some of the channels and they were picked up for a very cheap, very uh, less price at that time. So we're trying to negotiate with them that uh, we will share the revenue with them or whatever. It's, it's a, work in progress, but it's not the problem with uh, ANR's films only, it's a problem with all Indian films. Yeah. It's a huge problem. Yeah. On your personal front, uh, after a long time you are collaborating with other industry people, uh, with Cooley or Kubera coming up. So, what can we expect? <coughs> yes, uh, I'm uh, doing uh, uh, Lokesh Kankaraj's film, Cooley. Yeah. How do we call it? He is not Gen Z, but I believe he's a Gen Z <laughs> kind of a filmmaker. He's excellent and he's very uh, uh, a new kind of filmmaking. I'm noticing, even in the characters and even in the screenplay and all of that. And I'm really, really enjoying it because he it is very liberating playing his character. There is no holes. He, he does not say a, a character or a um, a person has to behave like this, a hero has to behave like this, a villain has to behave like this or something like that. He's, it's very liberating and I'm looking forward for that. Same thing with Shekhar Kamala's uh, uh, Kubera, uh, which I'm working with Danush. The Kuli was with Mr. Rajnikanth. Yeah. So this is with Danush. This is also very, uh, you know, Shekhar Kamala is very realistic. It's a completely different kind of filmmaking. So I'm enjoying that too. It's, it's, I'm experimenting now. <laughs> I'm very happy. Okay. All the yes, Thank you. Can we have a mic for Yeah, go ahead. Get in the front. Oh, there's a person there. Yeah. 
Hi, this is Raghu Virareti from Annapurna Studios. Sorry, I'm mean, a pro in acting. You're from Annapurna Studios? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Honorable, Honorable uh, Akhnani Nageshwar Rao, how he, he should be like manage his time as an actor, as a family person, as an iconic person in his life journey? Can you explain it? Could it be a little louder? Because you know, your mic, that mic is not very clear, it's very muffled. Can be a little louder. Uh, Akhnani Nageshwar also, how he would be like uh, manage his time with his acting life and his uh, personal life and his uh, uh, iconic in his society perspective. Iconic so society. How would, how would he manage his time? Yeah. Okay. They want to know how I would manage the time as an actor, as a family man, as a philanthropist who would serve the society. Did he manage? I really, I really don't know. I can't. So, but uh, I, he was very, very clear in his head. Very crystal clear in his head. Fearless. He did what he wanted. And um, he used to get up at 5.30 in the morning. So, he had a long hours yeah. <laughs> to go through. Adding up there's a will, there's a way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can we take something from there, behind? Yeah. yeah. Give to the person the cap. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. I am Dr. Manoj Sharma. I teach in, I am a professor in JNU, Delhi. And uh, I also work on films. I am a film historian. So, my question is that when you see the life journey of ANR, sir, so he has worked in a lot of devotional films. And you also talked about the value systems at home. So, I just want to know whether working in such kind of a cinema and having this, that kind of a value system, are they related in any way? Absolutely not. I don't think so. Um, he, yeah, Enar worked in a lot of devotional films. He had one reason for that. If you've noticed, he did uh, Kalida, Swipranarena, Bhakta Tukaram, and um, uh, one more thing was there. I think he, he was a cultural ambassador. He played every possible yes, yeah. saint and poet. So every possible saint and poet, he said he wanted the Telugu people to know the culture of India. That was his main reason that he worked in his films. He brought the, uh, uh, that faith, that culture into uh, Andhra Pradesh at the time. And uh, I think family values and faith, uh, I mean, and doesn't come from devotion or the way you live doesn't. Those are two different things, you know. So, uh, I really don't know how to put that to you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, sir. My name is Rohan. I was just wondering about how your father chose his script selections. You said that he was a very versatile actor. And how has that affected your script selections to him? My uh, 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 ANR always looked into the depth of the film. We always looked into the depth of the scripts. Is there something behind subconsciously telling the people to uh, uplift their life or uh, their journey in life? Mm -hmm. For me, it is very uh, at that. I didn't look. I don't look that deep. For me, it is the association with the director and the scriptwriter, what I feel at that time, and uh, um, and I also I look at the relevance, if this script is relevant to today's age and time, that is very, very important, and uh, that's how I select my scripts. But you know, now I must tell, since this question came up about dad selecting films, it's a known fact that your father has never spoken Tamil meaning dialogues. And he, I believe he refused to get out of a car because the song they were supposed to do had some very sleazy or vulgar lines. Yes. So your dad has never done that. No, no, he, yes. did, he refused. So yeah, he, many times he walked out of the set. He walked out of the set. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I think those values where you respect in today's times when we are talking about how women are being portrayed on cinema, you have the legacy of ARR where even those times he refused to speak ill about women or to uh, say double meaning dialogues or walk out of the sets because the songs had double meaning in it or some sleazy lines. 
So, uh, and I think everyone follows that. And we are running short of time, so is there any more questions? Okay, you've been waiting for long. Namaste, ma'am. Uh, Mike. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Hi, sir. I'm from uh, An Anapuna College of Film and Media. Oh, wow. <laughs> All your students. <laughs> so, before going to ask, uh, before going to ask a question, sir, I would like to share that my mother is a big fan of you. And uh, my name is Abhiram from Manmadudu and uh, my brother's name is Karthikeya from Santosham Kalu. Oh. <laughs> and the question is, sir, what, what are the advices you are going to give uh, for all the filmmakers over here? Let me ask you first a question myself. How do you like Anupurna College? <laughs> 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 Sir, I, uh, uh, I really like uh, Annapurna College of Film and Media. The reason why I joined in Annapurna College of Film and Media is because of uh, you, sir. <laughs> My mother is very big, big fan of you. Sir. <laughs> Your mother made, made you come and join. Even I have passion to join in Annapurna College of Film and Media. I'm glad, I'm glad that sir, you told me that reason. Okay. <laughs> Adam, you have a question? Yeah. Yes, sir, has to answer, of course. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what do I pass on to young filmmakers? Yeah. It's a very difficult question to answer. What do I pass on to filmmakers? It is, if I say hard work, that's a very cliched thing. It's a very, very cliched thing. To be at the right time, at the right place, that's also the cliched thing. It is something which you need to manifest into yourself. You need to wish for it. You need to wish for it to happen. And you need to go keep keep at it. What what you want to achieve, and this just doesn't go for filmmaking. It goes into for anything in life. You need to want it so badly that it happens to you. That's all I can tell you. Wow. <laughs> yes, Anand, your question. Yeah. Hi, Nag sir. This is Anand Kumar. I'm from Delhi. I'm here. I'm here. I, and now I work in Bombay. I make Hindi films, and. Uh, to join film industry, it was one film that was Shiva, and 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 that was the uh, the first time I had sleepless nights in Delhi. Uh, I didn't know what, where is this taking me in uh, '91, I think. And, yeah, it was yeah, a, a, a 90, 90, 90. 90. Yeah. And and be, being from Delhi, it's not a place where you know there is a lot of filmmaking happening or something like that. So just getting into the college, it was, uh, this was one film, it just kept, uh, you know, uh, it was just there in my mind and three or four times I went to Plaza, watched that film and that's, it, I thought that I have to get into this industry. Sawal ye hai unse? Sawal ye hai ki how did you choose uh, Ram Gopal Verma to come and direct? Because I think it was his first film. And you were, you coming from such a big legendary family, how did that, what was that one thing which came into mind that he can make my, my If life? you remember my earlier answer, yeah. I was looking for, uh, to change my path itself. That's right. In films, I did not want to be like the other actors. Or, um, I, I, the other films I was not comfortable with. I'm right. not saying they're right or wrong. I was not comfortable. Right, right. And uh, with the Gitanjali, uh, with Mani sir, yeah. that happened. Um, and at that time, Ram Gopal Varma was, uh, he pitched a script to me. Yeah. And, um, and I liked his sensibilities. Right. And every scene he had told me in the film, he had a philosophy behind it. Wow. Why he created that film. He... Uh, was uh, greatly influenced by Bruce Lee and um, Ayn Rand and one, uh, one other, um, of course, Godfather. Yeah, yeah. He was very much influenced by those films. Very, yeah. He had given a, a, a theory for every se sequence, every dialogue which was mentioned in that film. He would say why he wrote it. And that impressed me a lot. And Maybe he was a great salesman, which no, sir, <laughs> I, 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 I got the answer. It is so beautifully now you described it. That was there in my mind. Yeah. How? The, because you were anyway a big star. Anand, so, too many, too many so questions. Good. Yeah. No, no, question. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to wind up uh, because we have other sessions and I think uh, we have been taking really long time with Nath, sir. 
So I would like to say uh, thank you so much, Nag. Thank you uh, for being with us, for sharing your thoughts. I mean, it takes amazing t uh, talent to be where you are today. Apart from, of course, the legacy that has been forwarded by your father. You, yourself, is a legend today. People look forward to you. Like someone said, they want to be Nag Arjuna. So, you know, all we can say is God bless you and thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.